first of all, this video I'm making now is to clarify something that I have gotten on my Twitter and I have gotten on YouTube and people have asked me on Facebook. Um, I'm going to clarify this. I don't have to explain myself to you guys, but I'm going to tell you why I like what I like and I am inspired so much by this person. This video is on Steve Irwin and zoos and what I've learned. Steve Irwin happens to be a big inspiration and a big part of my life even though I've never met him. I have watched him since I was little. Since he first brought out the videos. Um, and I have been obsessed since then. It's not just a old as I'm as I'm older thing. I've always been obsessed with his videos and what he's done and what I can learn from him. Um, I tend to watch more of his videos than I tend to listen to music. And that's a big deal if you really know me. Because I love listening to music. Um, anyway. Steve Irwin. It wasn't always appealing to everybody. But you have to have that connection with him to be so attached to what he says. Um, I want to be a zoologist if you have watched any of my other videos. I know some people have this preconceived notion that zoo animals are captured from the wild just to be put in the uh, zoological facilities. Um, and I know they also have this preconceived notion that they're not treated right. I volunteered and volunteer slashed uh, amateur zoologist worked at a zoo for two, two summers. I went in 2009 and I went in 2010. I will put some video, I will put some pictures at the end of this. Um, I have learned firsthand that those animals are the first priority always. You go in in the morning, you prepare the diets or you clean up their, um, their habitat where you, the people that come into the zoo to see them. You clean up their habitat. Um, and depending on if they're class 1 animals, which is clarified, they're very deadly. If they're class 1 animals, this has to be a zoologist that does certain things. But you can still fix their food. And when they're in their um, night houses, you go in there and clean out their, um, their habitat. So it looks nice. It is not just for it to look nice for the um, patrons and the visitors. It's for the safety of the animals and the zookeepers and trainers. So they don't, in case they go in there, they don't get hurt. Uh, animals in some zoos could be mistreated. But from what I've learned and what I've seen from the zoos I've been to, they're not mistreated. They are brought in... They are brought in from the wild if they can if they're considered rogue animals, which means they they are um they are dan they are a danger to where certain people live and they can't have their children out and stuff like that. If they're a danger to where people live or if they're a danger to themselves or if they're injured and they can't get food. They're caught they're not really caught. They, um, people are notified, um, zoos are notified, and sometimes they go out and help calmly capture or catch them, whatever term you want to use. I'd say, um, catch them so they can be brought into a zoolo zoological facility so they can be taken care of. I know once they're uh, habituated to people, they can't ever go back in the wild because they won't ever be able to fend for themselves. I know that. I mean, I don't doubt that. If you put them, say you put a crocodile that's been habituated to captivity, um, you're not going to be able to return them because they're going to always look to people for food. And they can't catch it on their own. But they can, have, they can come in because they're injured, because they're abandoned and they have nothing and... They come in abandoned as a um, little one, as a little animal, or a cub, um, a baby, stuff like that. They could come in because they have been abandoned and they can't take care of themselves. And if once they get bigger, if they can habituate them to the wild, wild setting, they can return them. But if they can't, then they stay at the zoo and they are there to teach kids and families about what what happens in their natural setting um 
it is not just people going out just to ca to catch them to bring them into zoos. It's because they're either rogue animals, they've been abandoned, they've been injured to the point where they can't take care of themselves, or they can't be re um, re rehabilitated to be let back into the wild. It's not just people going out and getting animals to bring them into zoos. It's not like that. I mean, from what I've learned, it's not like that. Um, Steve lived and breathed animals. He loved his family, but he lived and breathed animals since he was little. Um, there has been videos where he said, where his mother said, and they went on vacation, and he was down the creek um, chasing lizards. He was only like two or something, and he'd be climbing up a tree. Steve doesn't just do that. He didn't ever do that show just for views and to get money. That's how he was. That's how he lived. That's how he acted. You can read Terry's book even though I haven't read it. But I believe everything. Steve is somebody that I would love a type of guy to marry like that. Passionate. Loved his family more than anything. Would do anything in the world for you. Got his message across about what he wanted to do. Which is why part of the reason I want to be a zoology zoo, wow, zoology zoologist is to help continue his dream of conservation and spread it across the world The animals do have a role in this society they do have a role in this world if we take them out and ex have them so far extinct like have them extinct and they can't come back they'll never come back like elephants are in extinction crocodiles are in the verge of extinction if we get rid of these animals we never get to get we never get to see them and how they act animals are important even though a lot of people don't think so this goes for house pets too like cats and dogs they deserve to be here they only want one thing from you and that is for you to love them and they will love you back now if you abuse animals and i find and if you abuse animals and you tell me that don't expect me to be nice to you or to be friends with you because I don't approve of that. Animals don't do anything to you. They're born into this world just like human babies are, just like you were, and you're going to take them and have them fight with each other for your own sick amusement to make money. I don't agree with that. Steve Irwin lived, like I said, lived, breathed, it was all about all about his conservation messages and his passion and everything. He loved every animal he came across. And I can pick that up on the videos I'll watch. I love an every animal I come across. Although, I'm not too comfortable with snakes yet. But I'm sure once time goes on, I will get more comfortable with them. Like, I love kitty cats. Say hello. I love kitty cats. I love all kind of domestic house pets. But, um... I also love all kind of wild animals. I have always loved elephants. When I was little, I had a little toy and I called it Ethanet. Because I, I couldn't pronounce elephant at the time. Um, it's not just something I have gone into just liking Steve. If you, knew, if you knew me personally and you knew my father and you knew my mother, they could tell you from the age of two, I've always been obsessed about animals. It's always been something I've always loved. Um, I was at my grandfather, uh, that happens to live with us now, his old house, and they would have, the house over beside them had a big, humongous field and everything, and had a ton of cows. He would get apples and put them in a bucket, and when I come over, I would just, because I was two, I would toss the apples through the, um, fence and watch the cows eat them. It was a fascination. I could stand there and do that for a whole 24 hours if I wanted to. People think that because you like somebody and you just don't say it all the time or you're just saying it as a length of time to get a message across and stuff like that. You can't just say people just like them for an unlimited amount of time. Like for me, I've loved Steve since I was like 6 or 7 and I'm almost going to be 21 in July. Do the math. Um, Steve... People who work in zoos do not just work there for just to make money. They work there because they love what they do. That's why I want to work at is at the zoo I volunteered at and was an amateur zoologist at for or an Australia zoo. It's like the burning passion inside of me is like driving me 
completely mad that I want to work in a zoology. I don't see myself anywhere else. I don't see myself in any other career. Now, before you think when you go to a zoolog zoological place, a zoo, a, any place that has zoological animals, please think before you realize that you think they're mistreated. Some cases they may be, but some cases, a lot of cases, they're not. Um, like, I won't go to a circus, especially that is around here, because I, I have seen videos, and I didn't like what I saw, and I, I just, I didn't like it. But, please remember that people that work at zoos do not just go and get animals out of the wild just to bring them into zoos. They're brought into zoos because, like I said, they're rogue animals, and they can't take care of themselves or they were abandoned and they were injured it has nothing to do with people thinking it was it's a it's some sort of sick amusement to get animals out of the wild i've rambled i've repeated myself but hopefully you got my point i will post some pictures of my time at the zoo for two years i'm not gonna put what year is which but you can kind of tell the difference um at the end of this video um See you soon. I have another video coming. Hopefully, y'all listen to that too. Bye. Say bye. Bye, everybody.